it is an electrical toggle switch. It's basically what it is. It, what it allows you to do is use a low voltage, low amperage switch, which are usually smaller than a heavy amperage switch. Mm -hmm. Think uh, a low amperage switch controls a relay. And the way a relay works is it has, in some circumstances, five pins, in some circumstances, four pins. In a four pin relay, the center contact pin, which is in this particular brand and style of relay, this is called a Bosch 87 relay. The center pin is disconnected, it's not installed. It is only a four pin relay. If you look at the diagram on top of the relay, this shows that it is a 12 volt, 30 amp capable relay. 30 amp relay. Right. The physical difference between a 30 amp relay and an 80 amp relay are the size of the terminals. Although the 80 amp relay will plug physically plug into a 30 amp relay harness, the connections are thicker here and also slightly wider. Other than that, the physical dimensions, depending on the brand of the relay, they could be identical sizes, slightly larger. The big difference is inside the case, it has heavier conductor wires built into the relay itself. Right. Right. This is the internal difference between a 30 and a, and a 80 amp relay. Notice the size of the coil. The 40 amp relay, the coil is smaller than the 80 amp relay. This coil will take more of a load than this coil will. Also the contact points in the 80 amp relay, right here the screwdriver is pointing to, are larger in diameter versus the contact points in the 30 amp relay, which are right here much smaller contact points. Also the, the, the actual relay that moves, the part of the switch that moves right here, is larger, thicker based metal than this one. It creates an electromagnetical field which pulls this lever, which in the resting position points at the 87A and what it does is when you engage it, it brings this lever down to 87, creating a contact between 30 and 87, turning on the circuit in which you wish to engage. Wax string tying. Make a loop, collect the loop, wrap, pull the loose string through, position your wires exactly how you want them, bring them back together, Tie a knot. Tie a second knot. Tie a third knot. Bring the ends back together. Remove the excess no closer than one quarter of an inch from the knot. Clip and done. So AC, why do you use the wax string as opposed to the uh, zip ties? I will make a demonstration for you of that. Wax string versus a zip tie, why? In a wax string application, you have a soft connection, right? It is very user friendly. There's no sharp edges, no rough and raw edges on it right here. In a zip tie, where I installed this zip tie, and I'll give you a demonstration of installing a zip tie. Bring the wires together, route the zip tie, Install it into the back shell lock, pull tight, and clip the excess. Pretty simple. Now, the difference between a wax string and a zip tie. The zip tie, although it is functional and aesthetically purpose doing its thing, it has a sharp edge where I cut it with the zip tie, with the wire cutters right here. These are sharp edges. When working underneath the dash and in confined areas, and you reach your hand up behind there, do perform service or any, any other operations, you have a sharp edge as you're reaching up in there and it will actually, as you can see, scratch my hand as I go up in there, rubbing across that edge of that zip tie. Reaching up to get something, it scratches you. Reaching up to grab something with a zip, with a wax string, <laughs> nada. Tickles. <laughs> no damage.